whenever, wherever. We're meant to be together. I'll be there and you'll be near. Oh, that doesn't look good. Hello, I'm Charlotte and this is Books and Bargains. My hair is 100% floofy today. I've just settled Nana with a cup of tea. And so let's get into part two of my Q&A. At the end of this video, I will be announcing the winner of my giveaway. And I'm trying to decide the best way for you to contact me if you're the winner so that I don't get scammers. We'll see how that goes down. My hair is poofy today. I washed it last night and didn't put any product in. But there you have it. Let's get into the questions. I've just realised that I was about to say question number one, but as this starts from 20, if I try and keep count, I'll probably get lost. So I'm just going to go with it and just say the next question <laughs> is. So the first question of this part two, if you haven't already seen part one, I will link it above. But it is, what, which favourite author would you like to write in a different genre? Now, one of my favourite authors is Miranda Dickinson. And I can't see the book right now, but she has written some kind of, she writes my kind of romancy books. And she has also written some, I don't know if they're thrillers or police procedurals, but I do have one of them on my shelf to read. But I wonder... I'm trying to think, like, I, I would quite like, so I love Claire McIntosh's thrillers, and I don't think I'd want Claire McIntosh to go all the way into a romance, but maybe there's a kind of emerging genre of, a, like, a romantic thriller, which I think would be good. I also think that any of the kind of, like, I obviously love Heidi Swain for the kind of village feel, so I could imagine Heidi Swain writing a kind of cosy murder. I really don't like the term cosy murder, but you know what I mean. So yeah, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's any kind of YA authors that I've really enjoyed that I wish. Maybe if Jacqueline Wilson wrote an adult book. Who knows? So that one has given me quite a bit to think about. The next question is favourite places to buy books and as most of you will be aware I don't leave the house much at the moment but when I did used to leave the house I had really started getting into Fox Books in Leicester so Fox Books is Leicester's only independent I say Leicester's it's the only one in Leicester city centre um, but I have been informed that there is a few bookshops near here that are worth visiting like Kibworth Books and oh I can't remember what the other one's called I'll leave the details below it's on the A6 near Haven and it's a second-hand bookshop um, but at the moment any books that I do buy I do do my pre-orders through Waterstones I I try and avoid Amazon where possible um, but I do know that Amazon is the only place I found really to do wish lists that work. Um, I still get comments and direct messages asking me when I'm going to put my wish list back live. And at the moment, as I'm trying to work through my TBR, getting more books is just something that I don't need to do. But I do really, really appreciate the sentiment behind it. So depending on what you guys think, I might put my wish list live again for my birthday in July. Um, but it's always a weird one because I feel like there are certain booktubers that I used to follow that I don't anymore that I feel like they're always kind of expecting their subscribers to buy them things. And that makes me a little bit uncomfortable but then at the same time, I do understand I quite have enjoyed in the past sending little gifts to people. So it, it 
it's all a thing that I need to work out how I feel in my head but that wasn't the question yeah I do do my pre-orders through Waterstones and that's because it works out well for me that I do it when they have I keep a list of books that I want to pre-order and then when it comes to their triple double points events I always pre-order then but my favourite place to buy books is always going to be charity shops and secondhand bookshops. There is nothing like the hunt for me. So I do really enjoy kind of more curated charity bookshops. If you are in the Leicester area or Leicestershire area, Queen's Road in Leicester, it's a little bit out of the city centre. But on a nice day, it's a good little walk on most days for me it is a bus journey but there's a Loros and an Age UK bookshop there that are both fantastic and yeah they're my favourite places to buy books I love nothing more than charity shopping for books but haven't done that in a while tied into that the next question is favourite book shopping experiences since joining booktube and one thing I will say that booktube has given me is that I will now purposely seek out bookshops when I go places i've always wanted to seek out charity shops i've been a charity shopper for pretty much my whole life but bookshops were a bit hit and miss because again i do sometimes find it hard to part with money when i know that i could get books cheaper elsewhere but then on the flip side of that i do like to support independent bookshops and there are two experiences that stand out in my mind and the first is going to the book barn near it's near Coventry I can't not the book barn um Astley Book Farm that's the one I'll again I'll leave this link down below because me and Tom went there for my 30th I think which was during Covid um and we haven't been since it's one of those that's been on the bucket list to go back to but again like i say it's not really um wheelchair friendly i don't think so i don't think i'd go there with nana but i remember on the day not even filming that much because i was just so overwhelmed by all these rooms and rooms of books and then the second one that I wanted to mention was when me and Victoria went to Oxford and we went to Blackwells and I think it's something like five miles of books downstairs. And I just remember you kind of, you don't think you're going into a big room, you go into this smaller room and then down this ramp and then you're just like, wow, there was just literally miles and miles of books i think i also need to give a bit of a shout out here to the barista's book chamber which i don't think is trading anymore i'll have to check there is their sister shop is definitely still trading which is barista, barista in wonderland um in retford which is a gorgeous little kids bookshop but yeah, the Barista's Book Chamber, I don't think is there anymore. And again, this is like an old house with just every room that you went into was just books everywhere. And again, Scarthin Books. There have been quite a few places that I've gone purely for books and hopefully many more places to come in the future. The next question is, what are the top five musicals you've seen? And I think that this could change daily, but... I would say top is probably Ghost. I absolutely fell in love with Ghost the Musical and all the special effects and the songs. I mean, I cried through it both times I saw it. But yeah, that has to be up there. Um, Blood Brothers, I would say, is up there. And I know that Blood Brothers is a bit hit and miss, but it's one of those musicals that I've seen over and over again. And I could see over and over and over again um it's really hot oh lion king has definitely got to be up there the effects and everything in that were fantastic there's so many that i've seen and it's weird because it's like uh, so many hold special memories to me for example made in dagenham Mine and Tom's first date was we went to see Made in Dagenham, the film at the cinema. Um, and that's where we had our first kiss in the back of the cinema because we're just cliche like that. But 
the mu when we went to see the musical it was good but i don't think i'd put it in my top five but it has so many memories if that makes sense so yeah i've seen a lot of great musicals um wicked was wicked obviously i've seen lemieux's phantom i feel like i'm gonna regret that i'm missing one here that i really loved but yeah they're all the ones that i can think of at the top of my head at the moment the next question is actually who are your insta buy authors but i think i'm going to do that as a separate video as i'm already on 11 minutes and i could talk about that for hours so that video will be coming soon the next question is do you have any holidays booked and as you're watching this i have just got back from norway and the i think my cruise vlog will be the next video coming up I am going to Corfu with Stacey in three weeks time which I am so excited about and then in September myself and my husband and my brother are going to Porta Ventura in Spain for my brother's 30th birthday so that has been booked a while and then after that we're just cautiously um not looking at holidays at the moment um i will probably say this in my cruise vlog but traveling to norway with nana was a lot of hard work um i think because at home she walked around with her frame and we couldn't take that with us because it's a big bulky thing it wouldn't fit in the car um we didn't realise how bad her mobility had got. So after a week of having to manually transfer her between the two of us in and out of bed, in and out of the wheelchair and just having that. My mom likened it to going on holiday with children. And I said to her, but at least with children, you can put them in the kids club for a few hours. It was that mentally being switched on all the time, being aware of trips and falls um other people just didn't think um we had a few altercations with people kind of pushing in front of the wheelchair bashing into the wheelchair and it was just it was a lot of hard work that's not to say i didn't enjoy it because i did norway itself was absolutely stunning but yeah after these holidays that we've got booked um obviously when i go to when I go to Corfu with Stacey, Tom will be looking after Nana. And when we go to Salou, my parents are very kindly looking after Nana, but we need to discuss options about respite and things before we book another holiday. And that with it comes with a whole lot of other stuff. So yeah, that's, that's the question in a nutshell. The next question is, do you write any stories and or poetry? And tentatively i have written quite a few poems in my time um i was published in midlands poetry now which tom informed me that pretty much anyone can get published in but still that was an achievement to me when i was in year 10 at school i have all these ideas for a novel that i'd like to write but i just i think i just need to start writing things down i do write in a journal every day and I write reflections on things that have happened and yeah like I do like poetry but it's one of those things that I've done for years and I've never really shared it with anyone well I did when I was younger but now no it's very um it's very much something that I do just for me maybe one day I'll share it but yeah who knows? The next question says, I have chronic ill health too and find reading an escape. Do you find reading helpful? And yes, and especially, I think I've mentioned this quite a lot on this channel, especially since I got over, I don't think it was a fear of audiobooks, but I just never really got into audiobooks before because I felt like I couldn't concentrate on them because I would always get distracted by something else. But especially in the past kind of six months when I've been having a lot of dizzy spells and having to lie down for periods of time, I've recovered from surgery or sitting in hospitals waiting for surgery and things like that. I've really, really got into audiobooks and I find that, yeah, I love it as the escape. Like you say, I can 
be sat in my bed in Leicester and be in Paris or anywhere really apart from here. Um, I do, I don't really read a lot of fantasy unless it's middle grade fantasy. So I know some people like to escape to a different world. I'm not so much into that. I mean, I'd be up for trying it, but I like to stay kind of grounded in this world. But um, I was going to say like a better world, but not all of the stuff that I read is a better world than this. Some of it that's meant to be kind of dystopian feels very much like the world we're living in. So that's not always an escape. But yeah, reading is one of the things that has kept me sane with my declining health because it's a hobby that I can always do. Um, So I do like singing and I like going out for walks and I like being in nature, but they're not things that I can always do. So wherever I am, I can always have a book and especially getting into eBooks again, I have a Kindle app on my phone. So if I ever find myself anywhere with 10 minutes to spare, I will just start reading. The next question is what is your favorite item of clothing? And I wouldn't say that I have a favorite item as such. However, you should know by now that Lucy and like you, ugh, you should know by now that Lucy and Yak dungarees are definitely up there as favourite items of clothing because I wear them all the time. I have retired my sunflowers for a little bit as I pretty much lived in them on the cruise <laughs> and think they potentially need a wash. So I'm wearing these teal ones at the moment. Um, But yeah, I've really kind of... I don't know kind of fallen out of love a bit with fashion I think I mentioned in the last Q&A that I I'm not having a great body image time at the moment and things that I used to wear that I really enjoyed wearing I just don't feel comfortable in at the moment so what I have done is I've boxed up any clothes that don't feel 100% me at the moment and they're in the garage um so I am going off quite a limited wardrobe in here at the moment I've got all my coffee clothes out which I do love my holiday clothes lots of floaty dresses and sandals but yeah this kind of in betweeny weather I struggle with because I just I get too hot but then if you go out in like a sleeveless top people stare and I don't like drawing attention <laughs> so yeah I I do need to kind of rediscover myself in terms of fashion. But for now, Lucy and Yak's got my back. The next question is, do you still enjoy bargain hunting while trying to reduce your TBR? And yes, like I've said, I don't get out as often as I used to, which definitely helps reducing my TBR. And the shops that I used to buy 10 pence books for are no longer around. So it does help. I am still partial to a charity table. There's a couple of service station stops where I did have a little look, but luckily for my TBR, there weren't any books that took my interest. But yeah, I, I'm still quite happy. Although I'm trying to reduce my TBR, I'm still happy having a big TBR. Like I said before, I'm such a mood reader that I would rather have lots to choose from. I think if I was someone that had a set TBR of like, x amount of books i'd get really bored and not want to read them anyway so it does help having a big choice i realize in the second half there are quite a few that aren't questions as such they're just statements but the next one is would you be able to put more clips of your cat as they are so adorable and yes i can definitely do that going forward how much cat footage is too much cat footage though because I take pictures and videos of them every single day, pretty much. They're always doing something that makes me smile. So let me know how much is too much. I then have a question, what chronic illnesses do you have? And as I think I mentioned in the last one, I have been diagnosed with IBS and endometriosis and polycystic ovaries. But then on top of that, there have been other kind of diagnoses floating around like chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, which 
will be mentioned by a doctor and I am waiting to see specialists but I'm kind of in that limbo but yeah I have I sometimes think with chronic illness it's not it is helpful to have individual diagnosis but for me personally the kind of what does that mean is more of a interesting question so for example at the moment instead of me thinking oh well I have IBS I would think these are the ways it impacts my life and this is what I'm doing about it if that makes sense so at the moment that is just making sure that I'm always near a toilet but hopefully once I see gastro and have some more tests we might be able to move forward from that. I am managing my fatigue at the moment by A, making sure I get enough sleep, B, making sure I get enough movement when possible and C, trying to eat as healthy as I can on a limited diet because I also have a lot of adhesions. Now, adhesions come from my endometriosis but also the amount of surgery that I've had. So adhesions are like tough bands of scar tissue so imagine like my bowel is going along like this I have these bits of scar tissue that are around it which creates a narrowing oh that doesn't look good <laughs> but that narrowing means that I have to be careful at the moment when I'm eating things like um, vegetables with skins and things because I get these I can tell when it's there I get this really bad pain and the only way I can explain it to you is have you ever trod on a hose pipe and you feel the pressure and the pressure building and then you let it go and it goes Phew. that is what my life is like the next question is what would be your dream job and I would love to be a nurse um it's no secret on my channel i was studying to be a student nurse which had to take a backseat due to all of the health issues and obviously now i care for nana i would never say never to going back to nursing but i do believe that our nurses are not paid well and the working conditions for nhs nurses are atrocious and also the university conditions for student nurses are also not good. I am very lucky to have Tom and Tom was able to support me but I still had to work so on a placement week I could be doing my 37 and a half hours on placement which you're not paid for plus have assignments plus have to do at least one shift as a healthcare assistant just to make ends meet so for me mentally and physically that would not be an option right now um and on top of that it's you have to pay to do the course so fingers crossed the political situation will change in the next few years i may go back to nursing i may not but that's how i feel i feel very passionate about being a nurse again I would either like to work somewhere like A&E or palliative care. They're the two kind of areas that I really enjoyed. Um, but yeah, never say never, but it's not on the cards for right now. The next question is, what's your favourite book so far this year? And I am drawing a blank. I think because in my head, I'm just literally thinking about the books that I finished in the last few days and if we're going on that i would definitely say dear martin by nick stone this was an easy five star i say easy five star this book is not easy for a is it about 200 pages yeah 208 pages this is and it is it hit me on pretty much every page it's about justice who is a is an honor student and he has a he's a black kid and he has a run in with the police because he his girlfriend I think she looks white I don't think she is white and 
she's drunk and trying to drive off in her car he's trying to stop her from doing that and the police he's handcuffed and taken to jail at the same time that a young man in another state is shot by the police a black man and this book it just explored so 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 much and I just can't imagine being in that position like I was always brought up to like trust the police and the police are there to keep you safe and the past few years have totally like wrecked that and I am a white woman I cannot imagine what it was like for a black teenager um, and this is set in America as well so yeah this is a really really important read so I think that is one I'm just trying to think because would I say that I enjoyed that book? No. I think there's a difference between enjoyed and... Um, so I appreciated the book, but it was such a dark one. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not saying that it was... That it... I'm not trying to say that I didn't enjoy it, but saying that I enjoyed it seems like the wrong word. I'm glad it was written and I'm glad that I read it but I think in my head enjoyment is like a happy emotion that made me feel all the emotions but not it wasn't happy I'm just getting up my story graph here to see if there's anything that I'd pick out to say is like the let's see which ones I've given five stars to to be honest, most of the ones that I've given five stars to are kind of darker ones. So I think I'm going to have to say my reread of the Brown Sisters trilogy is the one that brought me most joy this year so far. But yeah, it's been a bit of a mixed, mixed reading year so far. I mean, we're nearly halfway through and I'd say that I've read more kind of middle of the road books than actual five star reads so yeah i'm gonna leave it at that the next question is what is a line from a book that you will never forget and this is a cop-out answer but i've pretty much forgotten every line that i've ever read in a book i <laughs> i'm sure there are books that a line has happened and i've gone oh that's a good line and I do write lines in my journal sometimes, but just off the top of my head. I have brain fog with my chronic illnesses, so remembering something like that just off the top of my head. And weirdly, the one thing that I can think of when I think of this, and this will show you how my brain goes off on a tangent, is when there was the Wagatha Christie stuff and the one-liner from Colleen Rooney that it was Rebecca Vardy's account. And I just... That's all that came to mind. So, yeah, not a line from a book. Sorry about that. I know that that's a real cop out of an answer. The next question is, why do you enjoy middle grade books? And I think I'm not somebody that reads a lot of middle grade books. Put it that way. I I don't really read a lot of contemporary middle grades unless they're ones that I want to read specifically to recommend to people with children and especially I have nieces and nephews so I try and if there's a book that I'm interested in getting to give them I try and read it myself first I especially like books with representation of different genders and family setups so for example Benjamin Dean's books um what have I read I've read me me and my dad and the end of the rainbow and the sunshine project and also Alex Gino's books I think getting books into the hands of children about different families different body shapes different ethnicities is a really good way to try and make the world a better place and make the place the world a more inclusive place introducing kids to these stories before any kind of prejudices have had chance to set in so that's why I'll read them but middle grade fantasy is what I really like so I love the Pages and Co series I love the Starfell series I love the Rainbow Grey series and it is literally just because it gives me that feeling of escaping into another world where yes there'll be danger and peril but not too much um 
and yeah they're just so so comforting i don't really have any series like that that i read from when i was young there's none that sticks out to me i mean apart from the goosebumps series but they scare me a little bit now oh and the um animal arc series they just yeah they give me that that warm and cozy feeling so yeah that is why i read middle grade books and last but by no means least is what's a book that wasn't a favorite at the time but has stuck with you and this i had to really think about and I think I'm going to go with The Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out of the Window and Disappeared Forever. I read this book on a set of night shifts when I was looking after a patient who was in a side room because they had some kind of infection. They were pretty well and they were pretty mobile. They weren't at risk of falls or anything but they had Alzheimer's and so would forget that they weren't allowed to leave the room. So I literally spent the 12 hour night shift minus a break sitting outside the door. And if they came out telling them, no, you have to stay in there. And yeah, so I read a chunk of this book then and I can just remember it being the weirdest book that I have ever read. And I remember there was a lot of history in there, which is not my thing. And there was just a lot of strangeness to it. But actually, sometimes I think maybe I should... When, when I finished it, I was kind of glad that it was over. And then now, I do sometimes think about rereading it, but yeah that that one stuck with me because it was just strange right so that is all the questions i'm now going to get a random number generator up on my phone and let's pick a winner um let's have a look so we have 45 entries so between 1 and 45 let me hold that up here and click generate so that's number 12 and number 12 is emma dixon so emma if you want to message me below i know that you watch these videos how is the best way for me to do this emma i'll tell you what i'm gonna do so you can either pick the books yourself or you can send me an amazon wish list if you're gonna send me your amazon wish list just leave it down below in your comment i know you'll watch this you watch all of my videos if by the end of next week i haven't heard from you i will reach out and get in touch myself and we'll work something out but yeah if you just want to send me an amazon wish list and let me choose from them that is fantastic just leave it below if you want to choose yourself just comment saying that you want to do that and i'll work something out so thank you for watching this video and i hope you are all well next video like i say is going to be my norway vlog i am then going to do a kind of q a review of the cruise and what it was like traveling with somebody with disabilities so if you have any questions about that do let me know below but until next time, look after yourselves. Bye.